of architecture, but also in uh, the academy, the local academy of Barcelona. Jaime Cole and, and Judith Leclerc. Um, they are, uh, well, Jaime is from Mallorca and Judith is from uh, Montreal, but like many, many years based in Barcelona. Um, uh, always around IAC and they have been always uh, part of uh, juries and part of advisors in many uh, years and in many courses. But actually, they have never given a lecture here at the Arc, so I'm very happy that it is, um, uh, we finally managed to make it. And, and we very much thank you for your invitation. Jaime and uh, Judith, they have been working um, um, the last uh, year, since 1995, that they have founded their office in several projects. And what is interesting to combine um, uh, different aspects of architecture, landscape, and public space. Uh, they are experts in housing, um, in the social aspect also of how architecture can transform uh, housing and, and their form and their operation, but also in infrastructures. They have been doing a, a pretty innovative uh, park at the moment in um, uh, the Temebe Park in uh, the roof of a bus uh, uh, station building and they have been also working in different um, different works in, in uh, public schools and public services. Uh, I hope they will be showing some of their latest projects. One of it, I think it's also with our faculty here in Recruits. They are doing the renewal of the biosphere in Montreal and they are transforming it into uh, um, an experienced space of uh, biofuel ecosystem. Uh, we're looking forward to see that and, and to learn out of that as well. So um, no more to say, uh, looking forward to see the work. Thank you very much for being here with us today and please help me welcome Jaime and Judy. It's working, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you for your kind words, Areti. Thank you to the Yak. Thank you to all the people and friends that uh, has come here. Arlene, hi. Some of the collaborators that have been drawing or making some of the videos that we will show today. Maybe some of our partners. Now we will show our work done with uh, Manel Bailo and Rosa Ruya and another Don Rui Jelly. If they come here, we will invite to them to to share with us the, the talk. Um, and I I'm going to start with a short introduction. I think I will try, I, I will try to keep the time in 45 minutes, uh, maybe one hour, and that will be two parts, no 30 and 30 minutes. The first part will be about the housing system, dwelling system, the second part about some infrastructural ecological uses. Uh, there will be three and three projects, no? Going to start, this, this title is definitely unfinished, uh, maybe maybe a lot of you know that uh, comes from Marcel Duchamp that in 1923 the the large grass the Le Grand Père uh, definitely unfinished. No, it has been. Working. Hmm? Ah, sorry, he had been working uh, for a long time and and after that uh, it was abandoned not completely, but it, you know the the. The, the screen. Sorry about the comment. Yeah. I, I guess it's my fault. Exactly. It's in the same. Do you know where? Ya lo hago. 
orang lewat hati saya mark mark Right. Right. Okay. I'm not really good at PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. We have been giving lecture last week in Medellin, the whole week, and everything worked. Maybe it has been deconfigurated today. Um, okay, maybe I will continue standing up. So you know that is uh, that is the the word used by Marcel Duchamp in 1923. Uh, it's something like when we read that, you can read in, in the Octavio Paz book about Marcel Duchamp and in his uh, memoirs, etc., his writings. Is, is something that is not uh, all in Finnish, it's definitely unfinished, so it's, it's, it's in a state of suspension, no, maybe, and uh, it's something that uh, in 20th century art uh, he introduced the passage of time, process, transformation, stability, and finish, appropriation, etc., no, as a new categories in 20th century art. Uh, you, al you also know that Finnish, uh, that it's not exactly the same, I think, in the Spanish pavilion that won the Golden Lion, a very beautiful exhibition, a beautiful uh, collection of work, exhibit that. And um, they talk about the crisis, no, that began in 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 27, uh, especially in Spain, no, uh, that affects the profession of architects. Uh, a new architectural practice has emerged. Uh, he work. Uh, social mediation, tactical urbanization, etc. Rehabilitation, no. But I think that uh, I don't know if you agree with me. But there are some some uh, still a, a stylistic no derivation of about this this question of unfinished. That we are more interested in in this state of suspension of some of the projects that in a natural way, like rehabilitation projects, like housing, no, because the house has to be adapted to the user. Uh, some of the public work that has to be remodeled, etc. No, so our uh, the question that we arise a new question about the authorship originality of the architectural project. Who is the author? What is the project? Is the is the project in the design process? In a set of operations in the build products in the performability, etc. So the collection of Projects that will be free about housing and free about uh, facilities that attach to the life of its occupant. Project voluntarily unfinished by aesthetic ideology or stopped by the pieces and reprogrammed. We have some of these projects that were stopped uh, six, eight years ago, and we have been called again to to, to reprogram the same projects. You no. Know? Uh, we are not going to show because we don't have time. And in fact, we are compressing. You know, we are summarizing uh, three days lecture that we gave last week. Now, but for instance, the, um, the music conservatory in, in in Mallorca. It was our first project from 1996. We have been called two times. We have been called in order to make a very short, small extension of 300 square meters for five rooms for dance. You no, know, for instance. Uh, so project has to be. Uh, rethought, reprogram, uh, extended, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first part, that is um, the uh, uh, the, um, the announcement of the of the lecture, that is a gymnasium, that is it was the the the, the gymnasium caballero, the gymnasium 20 uh, 20th century, that is in the Raval, that is now our office and our house. And this is the situation in Barcelona. 
uh, the exact situation very close to the mark to the Magba uh, Calle Ferlandina. No? Um, in this place, in fact, all this triangle that is built in, in 1850s, 1960s, before the demolition of the big walls of Barcelona, uh, has been built all at the same time and by chance an area of, of gyms and boxing clubs, all this area. No? There are some marvelous still that are not working, but uh, there has, has been working until 1970s, no? 1975s more or less. So in 1998, uh, we had the chance to bought a very a disaster on office space. It was uh, in ruins. It has been abandoned for five or six years. Um, and it's the kind of space of parallel walls, a very 30 centimeters, you no, know, uh, big wing walls supporting bearing walls, and it's a square section, so it's 330 height. More or less, it was this is the original model of this space when when we bought. But the original, when it was built in 18, in this kind of 19th century, pre pre Ferda, pre Echample, that we like a lot, that. We, it's not easy, it's quite isotropic, no? It's, it's not easy to situate Bardum, etc. In fact, this is the principal. The principal in Echample, uh, the flat of the owner, but in the Raval was a kind of workshop, atelier. In house, dance house, etc. Different uh, 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 union, etc. Uh, but what we like it is this uh, very clear uh, su uh, supporting walls and not supporting walls, the three patios, the interior courtyard and the street, no, Fernandina, this is the staircase with our elevator. In 1997, when we visited for the first time, there were some remains of the boxing ring here. Um, there were not any more patios, so we, we asked for the patios, we, we requested the patios, no, because we need more light and more ventilation. So more or less, when, when we bought the space, uh, the, the owner demolished everything, the remainings, and, and we bought this. Uh, so we make a very, very simple and very fast. We didn't have kids, so we have only one room, a big uh, library, and almost anything else, and the, and the space for the office. In fact, we divided here into a different space. No? But, but in time, in 2005, we have uh, a big uh, reform because of the kids here, around here, and um, 2011, furniture, etc. So you, you can see, no, that the, that uh, we design very big uh, about or design or build very big pieces of furniture made of wood in order to 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 to, to use the space in different ways. We are also interested in, in this artist that we discovered in, in Quebec uh, at, the, at the museum built by Ren Kuljas in Quebec recently. He's uh, an artist from Montreal, so we are interested in the past of time, no? in, in housing. So we would like just to, to record this in the same way, but with pictures. That would be marvelous to have a kind of camera no? in the ceiling, the possibility to record the movement and the past of time, uh, etc. No? No, there is about chaos, no living chaos, for instance, here, no, all this housing. Okay, so this, these are pictures that uh, we could find in these 20 years that we have been living there because people we publish in different places, in different journals, uh, weekend journals, etc. And some photographers and some journalists call us and ex boxers, etc., call us, ah, we have seen you. Uh, your house is a boxing. I have some pictures, etc. No, so we could recuperate some of them. Uh, this was the 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 boxer that is uh, Itunero. He has a kind of of a statue sculpture in the in the Raval, but not anymore. And he was a close friend of, of Hemingway. No, we we could little by little a little reconstruct the history of the last year in the 80s and 90s in the boxing. No, so here you can see Itunero Hemingway. This is him when he was a champion. This is this is in in the gymnasium, no, in our house, before he died in 1993. And this is the famous La Masia by Miro. That is at the moment now that uh, the owner was Hemingway, etc. No, there are some information because when he died, 
didn't have anything, um, two of his valleys were sold, and, and the painter, um, Eduardo Arroyo, bought uh, the, the cases, so more or less there are some, some history uh, remaining. There are also some, uh, some, some films that have been recorded dead. For instance, this is Vasquez Montalban, uh, the detective, no? the police detective, uh, Pepe Carvalho. This, and this is the first uh, episode. This is not the, this is the entrance of the gym in Joaquin Costa in Osawer house, it's, it's a mix. This is. Sigue tú, vuelvo enseguida. Just one minute. This is the terrace that it was called because of the dressing room. Cuéntame cómo fue. Estaba borracho, apestaba whisky. ¿O se tiró? No lo sé. Ven conmigo. ¿A dónde me llevas? A ver al chico. Yo no sirvo para darte ese Pero room. sirves para buscar gente. Por eso te llamo. Quiero que the busques a la madre. No tiene parientes y es menor. A la madre lo meten en la cárcel. Joder, Rino, que no es la cárcel. Es un asilo. ¿Dónde está la diferencia? And this is the staircase, it was quite disgusting. Okay. This is the reform in, in 2005, more or less, uh, a little before, no? We, we bought this sarin and chair, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is because we have babies, not anymore. The, the courier. This is the main, the main 2006, so th that we, we introduced this kind of big, uh, it's bigger than a furniture, but smaller than a house, no? It's like a house inside a house. And, and we re reprogram all this space, no? like 40 square meters for, for the kids. No? So it's this kind of, of, um, of pieces to uh, keep advantage of the light and thing because of the window that were existing, etc. No? So we have to, to make a list uh, with a very specific uh, square meters and everything that we had, this list and to draw is like a ISO puzzle. No? Uh, and to make this, it's not nothing sculptural, it's just to space for every piece that we have, no? And this is the, the all, all what was we program. Interesting because we have 330, no? That is not uh, the regular 250. So now we are using in, in the school, no? And when we can, um, uh, it's, it's not double, it's one and a half, no? So what, we, what you can do with one and a half? So we were thinking 110, 110, 110. So you, you can use the first 110 for storing, for storage, or the last 110 for storage, or the middle, no? It depends. So we were thinking not only, so it's really a 3D composition of, of program. Space for the kids. The kit is made of clay wood. It's very cheap, everything painted, and this uh, are IKEA furniture. Though. So we, we take the IKEA from catalog. So we made the space to fit this IKEA, etc. No? Uh, there is a play with the door, and, and there is double circulation always. No. We have all the time. Uh, this is a double circulation, double circulation, double circulation, etc., etc. So we avoid the, the corridors, having this double circulation around furniture and, and around courier. No? Etc., no? More, more from, more image. This is a storage. We have big, uh, big baggage here and, and skis, uh, sport uh, uh, storage, etc., no? And it has been published the, the weekend El País, so, so the, I'm not sure, uh, or not, but, but she wrote, una reforma sin albañiles, no? A, a reform uh, without workers, no? Without, um, 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 no? Without cement. Uh, cambio si obras, no? Change, yes, but uh, no work. So uh, it was, no, it's, it's not, it's not an issue, but uh, it's about, reprogramming, no? adapting the house 
uh, using workers inside, just using carpenters, etc. No? Okay, the second, all the three projects are are, are uh, in a row, no? A related one to feedback car cavity close where where the the, the composer Schomberg lived uh, when he was living in Barcelona, uh, very close to the Pepe Ginas um, uh, Lesseps library. Uh, uh, what was interesting for us was it was a studio at the School of Barcelona. You can recognize Pachi Mangado, Ramon Sanabria, etc. No, Carmetinos here was the jury, etc. So it was it was a work done with three stage, no? So what was proposed to me is the, the city of Barcelona, uh, the costume art fair, etc. the building fair was one year workshop with the students. It was a competition, so there were like three or four finalists. The first semester was to design the volume. The, the house is a 15, 15 apartment house in Baikarca. So we have to share the course with, with Pachi and Ramon. Uh, and the second semester was to design the interior of the apartment. It is social housing, really very cheap social housing. So the master student in technology uh, were designing the facade and a prefabricated structure, prefabricated facade in a very, very thin three centimeters bearing walls. It was amazing. And we were designing just the interior. We were supposed to assemble uh, the prototype was like one million, one million budget, no, for for every Casa Barcelona uh, pavilion. So this one million was used for a week and was thrown away. So the the city, the institution, say no, we, we are going to recycle everything. It is not possible now in uh, in the middle of the crisis, no, in 2010, to throw away one million. So they proposed to to uh, this December and to recycle the three pavilions as a whole flat of this building that will be building in Baikarka. No? It was a beautiful idea. Uh, so finally, the crisis was stronger in 2011, so uh, the building was never built, but something was done. No? I, I have been working in this with the student, with this uh, proposed uh, kind of thick walls. Uh, we are organizing again like our house no? in these rows, so the difference is that we have very big pieces of furniture. It was after the, the children's room. So this, we have to systemize to, to find a, an order in order to make a small catalog. No? So we make a catalog of five, five or six different, this big furniture. It's, it's the size of a room. No? It's more or less like the tatami in Japanese uh, design architecture. No? So it's like uh, 60 the centimeters, 30 centimeters, and, and two meters. No? in order to have a bed inside this, this piece of furniture. So it's a big piece of furniture, it's, it's more than a, than a thick wall. No? Uh, so Adrián Scolano, that is, is a marvelous uh, drawer, he drew this taxonomy, no? this arbol typological, in order to, to find again, uh, we're making a lot of these of this, uh, taxonomies, no? when, when we're designing in series, it's very systematic. So we thought that it was good, one, 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 one should be a kind of balcony or a kind of entrance, no? Uh, should be in the middle of inside. Right? All of the, all of these uh, cupboards, in fact, we call from, we take from Archithum uh, 1973 habitable cupboards. So we, we, we took the name from, from them, from the MoMA exhibit. Design uh, the same structure for, for all of them, no? So you, you can see that the, the structures have the same principle, like T, like, like, like T pieces, no? Uh, that should be for one to 12 month babies, 12 or to 18 uh, years old. No, this is zero to 12 years, sorry, 12 years to 18 for 14 years, no? Like, like a chapel, no? With the computer here inside. This, this is because we, we like the, to call it uh, habitable cupboard. Uh, this is from 18 to 35. Uh, this is more than 35. So it is supposed that when you are between 18 and 35, uh, you want to live alone, so you need the space, uh, etc. So we propose in this, uh, this is a, a housing no? for parents, but this is a small apartment for kids after 18 years old. No? 
So we have to think new technologies that it was quite new in 2010. Now, it is requested in the, in the competition to, to rethink technology. But at this time, six, seven years ago, it was quite new to not to, to, to make the, the usual plan no? distribution. So, uh, finally, the, this is piece was this piece. So the, the builder that is Dynamo in Navarra proposed to build this one no? for the fair. So this is just when you older and you have kids, you need storage space. It's just storage, not this piece. What we thought is, is the minimum bedroom is eight square meters plus four, no? One space is for sleeping, the other space is for studying, playing, etc. So just, we don't just uh, we, we don't need just to, to draw a kind of rectangle. We can dislocate no, a little and to play with different kind of spaces. So we can combine different kind of furniture in this way, etc. It's, it's very random, no? Um, so this has this is um, this is the the, the the prototype in in Navarra in the factory, and this is the prototype uh, used in Construmat Fair with the stand. So we we really have zero zero budget finally zero completely zero. So we depend on the sponsor. So we make with with tape some uh, more or less the plan of the room, some of the apartment, etc., models, etc., everything very, very, very cheap. And uh, the prototype has to be thrown away. So we proposed, we, 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 well, finally we, we were not paid, so we say, well, why don't, we, don't you give us the, uh, this, this piece of furniture? So this is the piece of furniture, so we make small room for kids uh, this is the studying room for them, no? So it's, it's one more piece that we add to the same plan. And this last project related to, to housing, this is housing systematic uh, development, uh, is the Ordos, uh, the Ordos project from 2007, China. Uh, that is more or less, is, is much bigger, it's 1,000 square meter house, uh, and we have Instead of having three, 330 meters, we have five meters, more or less, four, four and a half, uh, five meters, no? This is, uh, well, you know, no? That is 100 architects, 100 days working for 1,000 square meters. It's this game that I weigh, weigh like a lot, no? To make, and uh, the context, no? From here we were, Vega, um, Chivega, as uh, originally was invited by he declined, etc. No, from all around the world, uh, from Africa, America, etc. Uh, Hundred architects in two two different trips, two two groups. We were in the first group, went there. No, this is the, the owner, the developer of the 100 plots, 400 house, and this is highway way in winter in, in the south of Mongolia. No close to, in the, in the north of China, close to the border of Mongolia, that is called Mongolia Interior, Inner Mongolia, no? So this is the, the visit is in January, and this is April, I think. So it's desert, there is snow, but at the same time it's desert, no? It's amazing. So this is all together, because in April, we went 30 of us in June, but in April, we were the, the first group, second trip, and the second group, first trip. So we met all together, 100 architects there. It was by chance, there were a lot of things, so we, we took one. It was amazing. So for instance, Barocci Vega had this one, I think. They were very happy. First row, uh, in the front, etc., etc. So we also were very happy because it was very, very strange, polygonal interior without facades. It was, it's unique, no? So we are happy. Uh, what was the thing that I way way to make square plans to make a square or that it's deformed we deform the square and other people make circles other triangles etc they were a big big repertoire you know it was amazing so this is the first phase no second phase 
So this is our proposal deforming because of the wind and etc. The, the, the limits of the plots. And this is when we arrived there, we have this model 1500. And everything was astonished. Maybe you can recognize some of them. This is Mexican, this is Julian Desmet, Ribungi, etc. No, an architect. Everybody like uh, what what's that? I don't know why all the projects were very, very big. Almost one project touched uh, the other, no? Ours is, I don't remember, this is the Barocci Vega one with the corners. It was very discreet, no? With very low. This, this is our, yeah, this is Barocci Vega, no? This is the first phase. Discussion, a lot, a lot of discussion. It was, in fact, it was a performance by a way, way. It was not a real commission. Well, it was a commission, we were paid. Some of the people, we met some Swedish architects, they said, no, no, we, we have construction drawings, some, some have construction drawings, but none has been built, it has been sold, everything has been sold, the whole promotion. So what has been recording, because the, the, the wife, the wife, I think, no, what the wife, maybe this is Highway Way, and the wife were making a movie, that you can find the movie, you, you, you write, type, uh, or those movie Highway Way, you have 60, 60, 60 minutes movie in internet in YouTube that is very really amazing, a very beautiful movie. Mm. I have a lot of requests because of the extreme climate, no below zero, like 20 below uh, Celsius, below zero, and uh, very extreme hot uh, 40 Celsius uh, above zero, no. And we, we have a request from the Biennale of Venice. I think very strange about a mask. I don't know why. So we have to to uh, make a presentation of a video, something related to transformation of mask. So we make. So we brought we brought this because it was the time of the Terminator. So we make that we think that the house will be beautiful again. Uh, something thinking that the the house could be adapted, no, or transformed depending on the weather, on the on the surrounding, no to cyborg. So anything, the, the, the text is not, is not very important, but we make this, this short video, I, I want to cut, that is just a kind of game, taking, taking the model of the, of the, so we think, if you close this, you have not 1,000 square meter, because we have underground, ground floor and first floor, no? So it's not exactly this, it's like 500 meters, but for sure, independent, independently from the shape, from, the, from this perimeter, you will have the 500 meters. No? So we were making, we thinking that the house, in reality, the plan, the, the, the perimeter, the limit of the house, it doesn't matter, it will be anything, no? depending on the orientation, depending on the winds and the radiation, no? etc. So we made this big model section, etc. It was a very funny program, no? Again, you can recognize these pieces of furniture by like in our house, no? So this is why we have a lecture by um, at the School of Architecture uh, Navarro, no? From La Carita Navarro, and he says so, some, something uh, asks him about European, no? They, they were the winner, La Ria Europana, and he said, listen, uh, working in housing, you have the, the, a project of a house in your head, no? In your mind, so you can only improvise in 15 years uh, housing plan. So it's something that you develop systematically. No, it's a system. No, it's a research all the time. So some of the pieces have been tested before, and uh, it's full of very small sauna, fitness, swimming pool, dressing room, small dining room, and no funny uh, music and entertainment uh, upper floor, master room, etc. Uh, and we have the roof, and so, and this model. And we were thinking, well, we have some advice from people from Madrid that have been our... Okay, so make it very, very simple, no? I way also said that, no? Uh, think very simple, so just maybe material to material, one color to color, no? So make some strategic decision. So no, no, don't make many drawings, with no many many details. Use strategic decision. Everything white and pieces of furniture to make of good. Anything else? No. Well, the stereo was uh, stone in any case, etc. And finally, 
in 2012, so five years later, appear in Bregenz, in, in Austria, uh, this big 150 scale, big, big model about the whole Ordos project and with all panels in a retrospective uh, of IOA way, no? So, is at the same time is is um, it's not only it's, it's, it's a performance, no? It's, it's not just a commission of architecture. Uh, talk about this, I would say that the main interest in um, IWA and architecture is that he's always very much concerned about social and political uh, situations. And of course, architecture is the discipline uh, where you have uh, always these negotiations. And even if you build as a private person a house, you have to negotiate with the city or with the landowner or with, you know, the, there's always this discussion. And I think the social involvement is very important in general for the work of Ai Weiwei, but especially, of course, also in the architecture. And his, what he was telling me is that he is very much concerned to bring architects from all over the world uh, and to bring theoretical and intellectual and cultural input because he, in his opinion, there is a lot of building in China going on, but there is very few theoretical discussions. And now with the second part by Judith, um, she speaks English much, much better than I do. Okay, thank you. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, new urban landscapes. So what you see here is is completely fake. <laughs> it actually looks like a landscape, but it, it was uh, built upon a big uh, concrete slab. Mm. We're going to make this big jump in, in scale right now and talk about um, not just something that changes in time, but uh, a big building that mutates in time. Uh, the term new urban landscape is something that we found that uh, Tafur used it when he referred to the Rockefeller Center in New York. So uh, he couldn't talk about the Rockefeller Center as a building as architecture, and he couldn't talk about it like as, as, as a park or a plaza, because it was all these things all together. It had hanging gardens on the roof. It had this big underground Boza plan in, in the subway underground. It had these plazas, raised plaza, these big uh, halls about entertainment. So he called, he used the word new urban landscape. So we're very much fascinated with these kinds of buildings because we had some commissions to sites where something was already there. And I think lecturing at IAC and thinking about that you are dealing with advanced issues. What is an advanced issue? I think it, it's thinking about the future. And thinking about the future, I think, is not working on um, um, a tabula rasa, but on top of a building and tuning it. So I'm sure many of your studio are geared towards that. So uh, let me explain you, uh, I'll explain three projects about building on top of a building or building um, a finished project, changing it over, over, and over. Um, so uh, a few examples for uh, your information of um, interesting places in Barcelona. Uh, so we've just pinpointed some of these uh, interesting buildings in, in Barcelona to uh, buildings that combine infrastructure or architecture, any of these three combinations could be two of these for uh, to be called new urban landscapes. So on the top left, we have this project I was uh, showing. Excuse me. Okay, this is actually uh, a rooftop, so it's a park, but underneath you have 400 buses um, parked there. Uh, the next one, you know, Hypostyle Hall of the Guell Park. So you probably have taken a picture of yourself, a selfie, on these without knowing that this was a machine for draining the water and harvesting through the columns the water to water the park over and over. 
this is the, the Bessos uh, river recovery uh, work. So uh, it looks natural. It was not like that 40 years ago or 10 years ago. Now it looks natural. It's all fake. Um, this is the photovoltaic um, construction by Elias Torres, you know, that uh, makes electricity, provides shadow in a traditional way, but it's built on a landfill on a um, water uh, treatment plant in, in the uh, forum uh, um, area. This is our favorite building in Barcelona. If you don't know it, you should try to go and visit it. It's the uh, Pompeu Fabra Library. You see a body of water on top of the roof. This is Gaudi's first project as a student. He worked with his uh, teacher, Fonterre. And on this uh, building, this was to uh, house the water depot for the Ciutat de la Parc for the exhibition, and actually to provide the water for his water fountain. And uh, later, you, you'll see later, it was used as um, refitted, retrofitted into a library for the Pompeu Fabra. So it's got books underneath the water. And this one is the Cajon Ferroviario, a little, an operation that's uh, quite similar to uh, the High Line in New York. So it's in uh, the um, box for the uh, fast train coming from Madrid into Barcelona Sands. And it's been, you, you know, since this summer, it's been covered. So a uh, glimpse of this uh, water deposit by Gaudi. So it was used at the beginning of the century as a like a Luna Park or a place for uh, leisure. So leisure, not at the street level, but at a very high level, at the height of the canopy in, in the park. Uh, you could see this uh, very interesting uh, picture showing the, the use of building. Is actually all this masonry was doing nothing else than holding uh, weight of the water. Uh, during the Olympics, so basically the floor plan is, is uh, these arches that were calculated by Gaudi and Ponceren. And uh, in the uh, moment of the Olympics, when I came here, this was uh, used as a beautiful place to show all the, display all the projects of the Olympics of Barcelona, and, and they, they thought it was a good idea. And uh, the Pompeu Fabra University used it and commissioned uh, Paricio Clotet to make a library. So it is uh, used as a library underneath, but you might not know there's water on top. And uh, similarly, um, this is just to show you the hypostyle that in, in, um, in the Well Park is actually made, um, it's, it's, a, it's a machine to ca capture the harvest the water. So uh, underneath this sand, you have these pieces of ceramic tiles that are very beautiful. They channel the water towards the inside of the column. The columns uh, take the water underneath. So and between the two spaces, you have the market space. It was planned to be a market. So it was a, a building, a market, a machine for water, and a public plaza for tourists. And uh, of course, you know this. Uh, um, I'm sure you're familiar with this. this is the machine by uh, Avalos Herreros. It's actually, they also inherited a commission with an existing um, uh, waste recovery facility that was already there in Barcelona in front of our beach. And they uh, redesigned the beach around it, uh, redesigned the roof to be a green roof and uh, included a program for, I don't know if you know, but all the wastes are treated, they produce, um, they are recycled. Those that cannot be recycled are uh, the organic waste produce a gas. This gas um, produces energy to make the place work. And the excess of gas is used for heating houses. So it's for district heating. And they, they explain this to people. The program of the building is, um, uh, an area where they explain young kids uh, about this system. So uh, the district, uh, district Lima is the name of the company that runs this, that uh, uh, manages the energy that comes out of that, the, the vapor. So you can see if you follow that, this is all the buildings that are connected. So we have two buildings. We have one building under construction not very far from here on Tangier Street. 
and this uh, housing also that is connected to that grid in the forum area. Um, we ask ourselves these, these questions. You know, could we design our infrastructures to be social from the very beginning or inhabited? No, just design an infrastructure and leave it to engineers. Could we design with the complete city in mind its infrastructure park system? Could social not be side effect but an objective? Could we tie into the city network to identify it? So for us, it's very important to work where we are and to um, intensify the, the city experience. So um, okay. we're at the limit of Barcelona. This is uh, about people. Uh, and it's the first pictures I actually showed you. So we, we sort of shift our uh, vision to an aerial view because it's the only way you can look at a park. You, you, you have to flip your, your vision. And usually as architects, we like to design something we see, but here we cannot some design a facade. We have to design a topping. So the only thing we can design is something that we can feel. So it's a very diff different uh, principle. So we have to play with topography. Topography is not something that you see, but you, you feel. So uh, we, we make this shift. That's why we have this reference to this piece of work by, by this. Art. I'd like to show the image of uh, our site. This is the uh, Veldrom of Orta. This is north, no, perfect north. And this is the Ronda, the uh, belt the highway around Barcelona that was built just before the Olympics. So our site is a series of scars. We have the Alde, no, where the deposits for gas, and we had these uh, terracing. Um, these were excavations, leftovers from uh, the construction of the uh, the Ronda. Basically, this the site that we had to uh, work with. Uh, basically, initially it was a competition not to do a park. It was a, con a competition to do um, a bus depot. A bus depot to remove the bus depot in the forum area just before the forum 2004. And so uh, it had to be done very quickly because it was year 2000. And so we worked on a proposal to just actually do something very, very soft like a landscape something that would continue uh, terracing, look like a, just like a mountain. And we were making the buses. Uh, we were trying to nest them, terraced underneath uh, in a very gentle and natural way. And so this was the section we were making where we had uh, construction a vertical way to be and to leave as much possible uh, horizontal space um, free. And so we won, um, but we won ex equo with another team of um, people that were 20 years older than we were. And so we wanted to, we wanted the city to decide. So we kept making models and models over and over and we said, okay, just stop. Um, work with the other team and do a first scheme. So this is what we did. And uh, we came up with this sort of uh, logic where we had a part of the roof which was covered with, with green and a part that was open for um, taller, the workshop uh, on the buses. And so this was the uh, scheme that we tried them to vote. So we had this terracing roof. And finally, they chose the older team. And they said, and you are going to cover that and make a park. So we, this was our site. So we inherited this piece of concrete, which is 200 meters long by 100 meters long. And it's a big staircase, um, a seven by seven meter square slabs that are stepping down 50 centimeters. So we have a drop of from this point to this point. So this was like uh, technically difficult. And um, so we ask ourselves different kinds of questions. 
first one with um, how do you maintain that, how do you channel the water, uh, what about the load, one meter of earth, ways we could put, but we have these steps, so when we have a step, we have more than one meter, what do we do? It's going to break. And so this is uh, when we started thinking about these soft shapes and this, this playing with the, the topography that uh, Geometry thought about. So we thought if we can make uh, with a little bit of earth, just very soft movement, uh, I think we, we can feel that. So um, we uh, divided the big area into smaller, more manageable areas, which are these rounded shapes. These are actually funnels. They're not very deep, but they're deep enough. They have different shapes, and they are all completely aligned. So all their centers are aligned so that they can connect the water underneath and channel them to some deposit. So basically, the solution was um, an hybrid between a city solution and a, a more like a forest solution. So 50% of the project was the continuation of the forest, the, um, the, the type of uh, vegetation that was on the hill, and 50% was more like a little garden um, unit of, of management. And uh, what I mentioned before, trying to tie into the city, so we really thought that people, the only way they could come here was by bike and by subway, so the subway is very near, just across the bridge. Come here and use this place as this place as the starting point to venture in the um, network of, of bikes uh, in Coiserola. This is the limit of Barcelona. And so we had to add a smooth surface for buses. So we managed to uh, have no steps whatsoever in, in this topography. So we can see this looks like a um, uh, place where you have uh, different degrees of difficulty. So you have the very smooth one, which is blue, and the very steep one, which is red. But all, all is continuous, and you feel like walking. You can use these um, shortcuts through the different funnels. And uh, another way of tying through the city, you know that Barcelona... Uh, as this idea that the down could see these green fingers. So uh, the leftover from these funnels would be this um, plant that comes from Africa that, that is covering all of Coiserola. It's called the Ipareña. So we would be using that plant as a, as a tie. Technology that one student, I showed you before this, this building, and it's not by chance that he makes this analogy because between Parque Güell and our building, which I will explain later in, in bigger drawings because it's difficult to understand here, is that basically this is a machine that covers an infrastructure and that harvests the water through its topography. And um, when we, the first person who told us to look at this building was uh, Teresa Gali, who is our um, engineer consultant. And uh, she said, this is the same section as Parque Güell, if you don't know it. But this is a closer, uh, a close-up. So I just wanted to explain to you that when you look at this, these are funnels. They, they harvest the water at the, at the center. And uh, the, left, uh, the, um, the leftovers is a porous topography. So it's just the way you, when you make um, a plantation of Iparena, you make a hole with your hand. So you make a small funnel. And this will drain the water very slowly. And as for the rest, uh, we have to catch the water very rapidly in Barcelona when it rains. So we have to build a uh, surrounding wall so that uh, so we first make these walls, then we make these um, uh, water collector, connect them through uh, with pipes. And here you can see these plastic pieces. This is how we find technically that we could uh, go high without weighting very much. So we could cheat on the weight and we could make up to 2.50 high change in, in, in height. So 
This is basically a piece of formwork. It's made out of plastic and you can pile them up and they all come in, in the same size, which is 50 by 50, but they have different heights. So pixeling the landscape to get a, a very different kind of landscape Low. So this is just um, an illustration of the different um, maintenance to be the, the kind of plantation, the kind of watering uh, sites. And we had soft and hard uh, artificial, natural treatments. This is a, a little bit the explanation I was trying to, you can see the big grid of seven by seven meter. And you can see these small 50 by 50 um, so you could see that they are piled in different ways and we were able to make this drawing pixeling it's like a topography uh, drawing no where it's high it's dark where it's low it's 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 uh, not dark so it's uh, actually a reinvention of the Catalan vault no it's it's a void and you have two times you have to, a roof so the idea was uh, let's collect the water and have it go through pipes and harvest it. Uh, this was the first scheme we made like maybe in half an hour when we started after talking with our engineer. Went to the water company, uh, the maintenance collapse company, uh, a sewer company. And they said, yes, you're going to organize that a little bit better. We need to uh, be able to register every 40 meters. So we had to adjust and make this uh, very um, organized, so you can see now we have these lines of uh, water conduct. So different moments uh, of the construction, we can see it's half covered with uh, these formworks. And on this side, we're building these, um, these um, little uh, roads that are always tangent to the circles. We, we have no steps. And uh, uh, later on, we start uh, having this uh, geotextile that protects from the roots of the plantation. And we are bringing um, the earth with these, uh, these conveyor belts. This was totally artificial. Uh, later moment, we have all the first half covered with, with earth, and we're still working on the other half. And this is at the moment uh, of uh, finishing. See, supposed to be porous was not porous, but that's the thing with with landscape is it it grows better. Things. So uh, these are images from the beginning. You can see the short funnels of the very beginning. This uh, plant is starting to grow and do its work. You see the different and the beautiful views. It's of Barcelona. Picture you when uh, everything be all the plants are natural area of sheets in shape before. And uh, all that was the first idea of the, the competition, no? to just make a continuation of the uh, skin of the mountain. And we were able to do that with very, very little height. Um, we're going to move to Montreal. And, uh, in this case, um, it's an existing building that had already been replaced. So it's, uh, we have a very big Olympic stadium in, in Montreal. Uh, that was the favorite building of Zaha Hadid when she visited it. This is not the, um, the Olympic stadium. This is the, just the tip of it. The last bump of it. It's, it's a gigantic stadium. This is the velodrome. So just after it was uh, used uh, almost very quickly, it was turned into a biodome because it was a closed uh, building 
in our climate, it was great to um, very close to the botanical garden, so they thought it was fit to be like a zoo, a combination of zoo and um, so it, because it was from 1992, uh, so two years ago, we um, we tried to be invited, and we got invited with Enrique Ruiz one of your teachers here at school, uh, along with a very long list of um, helpers. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you can see the uh, first image of the velodrome with, with, with views that it looks like it's based right on the and uh, the velodrome as it's used uh, right now as um, a series of map of how that for animal the different colors relate to different uh, can you make immersion tune up this place not change it. So we didn't know very much about the subject we researched. This was a research. You can see all the names of the people that were to be at trucks. We had engineers, geologists, etc. So we started researching about buildings, nature, energy, and architecture, and when they met. So these lines, we, we, we wrote this book. I don't have the time to go through it, but we have this timeline that we made no how quickly we started researching which was the first building that dealt with these issues and uh, the first buildings were the one that the kings were using the menagerie and the big parks regent's park um the bronx zoo so it went through different moments in time the the menagerie then we had uh, also the literature or paintings carl Friedrich. Uh, made these beautiful pictures of, of landscape, so there were interesting moments. And then and we uh, um, appeared like in in London. It was the, the first one located in the the Crystal Palace, dealt with energy plants, but not animals. So we, we started to find a uh, relationship and what we really wanted to do with the building that we combine the four vectors and we find the the um, uh, Chaumont in Paris um, re in retrofitting um, um, I can't remember the retrofitting these um, excavation uh, landscape uh, the, the most important one was the Bronx Zoo in New York City, where in uh, freedom and humans were uh, hidden behind uh, bars. And all these construction of a fake landscape, no, all, all these construction that you can see here um, or uh, at that moment, no, this is uh, in the last 19th century. And then we arrived to the artificial landscape. And uh, later on, uh, you can see here these construction of big mountains or the Lubitkin uh, Zoo um, for the penguin pool in, 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 in Hyde Park. And later on, we start seeing these big, big, big buildings that try to uh, trap the temperature of the weather. So we have these uh, projects you probably recognize, Buckming. The fuller and all these biodome structure that start nearly every by Cedric Price, uh, the the dome in Montreal by Buckminster Fuller for the American Pavilion. Uh, of course, uh, that is uh, when we have the uh, velodrome being built, and uh, later on, uh, I can't remember all the, all these names. Uh, the biosphere was changed into uh, an environment uh, museum. And uh, I think our two favorites here, we, we have the park here, our two favorites 
was this one, the San Francisco Science Museum by Renzo Piano, which is, I think, a great work I haven't visited, but Enrique did. And uh, so this was um, our reference. So basically, our um, proposal was to actually meet this big roof, uh, a new, a new um, ecosystem, which was as a, a cloud. If you know Enrique, you would understand. So we have a cloud uh, that would showcase uh, actually birds that actually do this. Um, they actually do this traveling. This is actually from the Arctic to the uh, Antarctic. And uh, intensify, change a dome for the uh, Arctic and Antarctic um, ecosystem. And actually, the others were uh, like um, little interventions to intensify the immersion. Uh, we made this uh, big wrapping uh, between the, this is the Arctic uh, dome, and on the other side is it the Antarctic, and you go underneath it to see the penguin uh, swimming. And the interesting thing is when you're at the north, you have the same light as in Montreal, and when you emerge to the underside, you have the opposite light because you just crossed the, the, the planet. Also try to explain, I'm not going to go through these drawings, but try to explain the different inter interventions through what kind of immersion we were creating, what kind of reaction, uh, what kind of sense we were trying to appeal to. And uh, at the top, the, the top line is about uh, what kind of uh, new input we were putting, new plants or new. Um, important thing was the height. No, we were trying to create uh, can you pass the next one? This was the uh, word uh, the sound because it, it's in French. Basically, we're explaining that we're stripping uh, the surrounding of the biodome to make it an immersive uh, hall. Um, and in which we invite people to know about the effects of the uh, global warming. And then inside the ecosystem, we propose this series through the rainforest to go up and climb, uh, actually climb, physically climb into uh, this cloud uh, to have this overview of this totally fake landscape, which was protected with these capsules that prevent uh, the weather to escape. And we were creating these, um, these effects, these rainbows uh, over the St. Lawrence, even the effect of rain. Uh, which is was already uh, one thing happening in the rainforest, uh, and to go inside some of these ecosystems. So some of the things occurring in some of the uh, other landscapes were caused by by the cloud. And this was a way of indicating the uh, actions we were taking, acupuncture, making. we were let, setting free the bats uh, to have a more close experience, removing the walls, using curtains with um, very cold uh, wind, uh, using a lot of projections to do that, getting closer to uh, the animals, building these big nests uh, to hide yourself from the lynx and see it from closer. Be cold in the, go out in the Arctic uh, weather. Uh, very quickly. Okay. This was in, you know, the Bezos River. So this, I'm going to show a project from 19, uh, from 2012, uh, done in collaboration again with uh, Bailoroi, which is uh, from Barcelona. Basically, this is our uh, proposal. And uh, as you see it again, there is a, some existing building here, which, which is, um, some warehouse by our uh, client, it's a private client. And really, uh, the building is so big that you can see it, uh, we have to look at it, the scale of the neighborhood, and we have to provide something for the neighborhood. So it's a combination of tower, like these towers here, and it's a combination of, of platform and green roof again. 
and you can see that the origin of the site is totally agricultural. It was a place where they were growing vines. Top of the, uh, it's a beautiful, we, you probably have never been there, but you have the best views of Barcelona from there. Uh, we wanted our project to be a link you know, between this uh, mountain, which is like the Bessos River, and the new Tanzam is a very, very large park in front of our building. So we researched again and found these uh, contemporary photographies of the site, people just liking to use the, the site as a, as a hangout. And we thought it had sort of these qualities. So this is the building we, we had to repurpose. And uh, so we had to go from here from um, the Bezos to the Serralada. And this is the back of or the existing building we had to uh, work on. No? So basically transform this dangerous street into something, uh, give something to the city. So to explain it very quickly, make the screen connector. Uh, try to promote the use, maintain the industrial use in this area of uh, not, gent not to gentrify that area of Santa Coloma and make many, many different versions trying to shuffle uh, a long building, a long flat building you know, for the logistic. Uh, it, it's a place that uh, deals with uh, um, transport of goods and beer and offices, so different ways not to provide shadows, to provide green space, so we had to deal, and that's why it took, we had to deal with the city and repurpose, uh, we changed the, the site planning of the whole area. So we took uh, back the project uh, a few months ago. Um, the client had changed, the client was the same, but he, had, uh, he was fabricating beer now, so it was to be a beer factory. He developed the project, but I had to go and explain it to the neighbors. So we had to produce a set of drawings or models to be able to convince the, the, the neighbors. So if, even if you have a private client, you still have to do a lot of talking and convincing. So basically, it's about covering half the building and giving these drawings that I'm showing you now. Living here. <laughs> and uh, came and helped in, in the office. And we found this was a traveling, was uh, very good to explain actually the client, to try to make him understand what kind of views he can have, the kind of information he doesn't get from looking at a model going inside, having these cross vision from seeing the um, uh, operation platform on the ground and the office and the great views back and forth. So we sort of made this animation. We think it's, it's kind of uh, useful. Uh, that's useful for the client. Um, and um, also these kind of drawings that uh, really explain that we're trying to hide the big portion of the building and uh, just having the offices uh, stick out like, like the head. See what works? Angry people, <laughs> angry neighbors. Is so I suggest you make a model when you have a touchy issue because people can touch, touch it, they can handle it, they can uh, rotate it with their hand, and they can try to imagine a little bit activity, what it's like. And we were able to get the go-ahead on this. Although right now this project is unfinished because the client, the beer company, won't be operating in this area because there's not enough water pressure. So they're trying to sell this to a uh, uh, supermarket. So the story is to be finished. So this is our last slide, I think, showing you it's not very glamorous to have to go and talk to the neighbors, uh, but this is um, how you do it. <laughs> Thank you.
So thank you very much, Judith and Damon, um, for this wonderful lecture on new urban landscapes and modular all scales and geography. So it was really wonderful. Um, I'd like to invite the audience, if anybody has any questions, to raise their hand, and I'll come by with the microphone. Thank you very much, Hyman and, and Judith. Um, it was indeed very nice to see sophistication and, and this complexity that an architectural mind has in every simple operation or in every simple scale, uh, even on, on the scale of our bedroom and, uh, and our own, our own, you know, um, sofa or, or chair. And um, it, to me, it becomes when it starts to impact um, the city. So your projects that they are more like uh, urban infrastructures, I think that they they are really strong and they are somehow proposing new ways, not of building, but rather like dialoguing with that building, uh, both the users, but also the surroundings of, of what you're building. So my question would be um, related to that urban infrastructure, because we, we are also at a moment where um, infrastructures are not only physical, but they are also digital. And uh, a lot of um, things that uh, uh, in, our, in our models or in our designs we need to camouflage or we need to highlight or we need to change form and, and reshape. I wonder how would that be possible if we start overlapping information also of the digital realm, uh, whereas this is coming from um, data and open data and you know like smart or smarter or or less dumb city <laughs> how we want to call it um, uh, and physical uh, materiality you know like design so how can we combine two infrastructures and whereas Barcelona you think that it is it has any specific area I mean I would like to have the feedback of some very many, many years working locally, what is the most problematic area of Barcelona or the one that has more possibilities in terms of that kind of infrastructure? Questions in one sort. Yeah, maybe you are you're asking us about, about um, smart city, you know, maybe the ports of Barcelona, the the crease area no, is the, more, the most polluted. It has, it, uh, I think it's that they change a lot, no? the, 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 the park that is called Xavier Monsalvace over the, the bus crash, uh, it was designed like 20 years ago, it was the project from 15 years ago, so um, it, it was very physical. No? I mean, now I'm sure that uh, TMB, the, the company, the bus company is completely smart company, the utilize and the bus, what you can see, no, all around the city, they are hybrid, very clean, etc. No, but at this time it was a very difficult plot. It was more intention and intuition, no. Uh, so the decision to make an ecological roof, it was very physical. Uh, we, we didn't test, for instance, now any kind of social housing is completely monitorized from here in Tacher, Alaba, uh, there should be two, two, two apartments monitorized with sensors in order to give data to other engineers, because it's Alex, Alex Ivancic that you know. Uh, so after one year of living there, we, 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 should, we are forced to write a report in order to explain how live if they are using Corre 3, the winter garden that we are, we are doing there, and if the saving on energy is real or not, because so it's completely smart. This is a commission from the Vicente Guayard uh, Times in the in the cities. So there were a kind of metabolism between the building, district Lima, uh, housing, photovoltaic, uh, and self-sufficient uh, block. No, um, finally, not necessarily like this. No, now question of metabolism is more related on 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 self-sufficient. We have to 
to end there because we are forced because of, of European Union regulation after 2018. But uh, it's more related to optimizing uh, resources, optimizing budget, optimizing space, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, flexibility. So it changes depend, depending on the policy of the of the public uh, institutions. Um, compare this housing block, social housing block now to housing block that are done completely by intuition. Now it's completely tested, completely monitorized, completely calculated, everything, no? It has nothing to do. So we didn't have the chance, maybe this building in Santa Coloma, the, the, the Heineken building, no? the, the beer building, uh, but the, 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 the budget was very, very short. We didn't have, we didn't have the chance to hire a specialist on energy or, or an, uh, a kind of specialist in order to work in a smart way you know, with the building, but our intention was an area in the city of Barcelona, everything is very implemented. I think the port is, is the, it's a pity, you know, it's one of the best, the Besos, the Besos, the Jobregat and the port are the best public space and all the beaches the front, littoral, no, are, are the best spaces, no, uh, it's quite primitive, no, they will, they, they handle the, all these, uh, port spaces, I think, is the uh, to 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 pay uh, to to pay attention. Difficult. I also asked myself this question. Um, I was here when Philippe Ram explained the Jade Echo Park in in in, and um, I was fascinated and also. I uh, was afraid of the results. I don't know if I would like this park. You know, it's this park that uses uh, extra uses sensors um, to detect if it has to create shadow or if it has to create um, vapor, you know, and that does things. And it, then he, sh he started showing what I called, you know, his collection of gadgets like James Bond. And I was wondering, what about technology? Technology doesn't last very long. And when we build a space, outside space, it, it has to be very long and easy maintenance. So there's a bit of, con um, you know, I, I find it uh, ambiguous because in a way you want to have long lasting maintenance and in a way you're using sensors. So I think sensors would be good to use for design, really for construction. That, that's what I think. For example, we were in Medellin and they showed us that they were mapping the, the slums and through different kind of mapping, they discovered areas of theft and crime that were concentrated in some areas. This is just true to know where they had lampposts. You know? Then the, the, the of uh, violence, then they found, they went to these places, they found that they had water deposit there that were fenced. That's where they decided to retrofit these spaces as public space and to um, make a very safe area and uh, to use that as a, a retrofit as um, a typical um, um, informing people, giving them classes about internet, etc. No. Uh, so I think it's more about acquiring knowledge about where to build, how to build, than to use it because I think it's in public buildings, I think you have to be responsible for um, at least plan years. So that's um, what, what I see. from my side I, I, I really love your your lecture um, and I look and I love the way you present the project now like a kind of game you set up the rules of the game and then you you play with it till till where you can get or or either physical constraints stops you or bring you in another way but it's always a, a game not patient no? like kind of a kind of uh, did you ever try to think about uh, using technology, maybe not in the in the final proposal, but in the process? No, can you can we use uh, game to to develop this uh, combinatory process, or uh, can you can we use technology to 
check all the possibilities of combination to check which is the best ones, or you feel more comfortable still in a more kind of, a, you know, <laughs> handmade game. Get my point. I'm, I'm trying to challenge you to see, to try to push you out of your comfort area and see whether in your uh, work there might be place for the technology. Maybe not in the, as you're saying, the final um, construction, but maybe in the process, since I see a potential there, because uh, as soon as you like to, to play, there would be space for, uh, you know, parameterize this and see how you can play with technology as well. No, really, uh, the park on the um, on the top of the bus garage was it should be glass hopper, evidently it's, it should be, and uh, there is uh, this beautiful uh, study by Luis Ortega in his PhD dissertation, no, comparing Parkway uh, to a kind of of virtual the, the digital uh, um, design of Parkway related to real digital. Finally, it's very, very physical, no? Again, at this time, 15 years ago, it was very, very physical. It was done one by one. The pictures, the color pictures were done one by one, no? By, in fact, it was done by Adria Goula, no? The, the photographer. It's fantastic. For, I, I think that he abandoned architecture after, after drawing the, the two, two hectares, no? 20,000 20, square meters of small pictures, no? Color pictures. Uh, so it should be also open in order. What, what is interesting about digital is that Or for instance, this this kind of of game about the the, the facade of the Ordos house, all this uh, digitalizing this, uh, we could produce uh, with a set of rules, very specific rules, as many things, and very 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 control uh, project. No, the park could be anything, but finally it's very complex because you know you you have existing roof. We have the, the, the load bearing of 2,000 uh, kilos by square meters. Uh, we have uh, um, the collapse requirement about quarter, the, the, the 40 centimeters cubes. Uh, I don't know. So it's true that uh, now it should be done in a different way. But in order to build, it's not so clear because it's too complex. Maybe we could use beam, no rabbit, anything like that. It should be re requested now, no? Maybe. Uh, uh, I, I see in our developed systems, set of rules uh, around different users, like like the game of chess by Duchamp, or, or with a lot of influence of the 90s of Bernard Chumi when 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 I was in Colombia, no? Situationist. We sing, etc. No, all, all this theory about about game, about etc. No, in any case, that that's true. That from the 90s to now, it should be as no? to to new tools. And I agree with that. That that's why and my son also are very curious about. And we 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 took our student here with Antonio San Martí once, no, three or four years ago, no, in order to test a little bit, no, these new technologies. Hello. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you again for your presentation. I I have a, a question regarding the furniture module. The big, beginning have this really beautiful complexity um, to them, and and they allow people to think them them in different ways. They to inhabit the space. Also, in in your new urban landscape, also have this. This beautiful complexity, um, and I was wondering if you foresee, in, in some manner, and sort of get they do uh, with the furniture modules, the mice and clay with and inhabit, It's because you did, I was um, and and that sort of bring people closer into that uh, reality and which which gives no. uh, that's a difficult question uh, actually when we finished the park told me a part 
that because when you go there you don't see any any of this complexity as as you can see it in Parguel well you don't really see it we saw it because uh, recently it was uh, retro it was uh, improved by uh, renovated by uh, Elias Torres so he removed all the sand and we found these pieces so uh, it's visible I guess the uh, one thing and uh, to be about this you know this especially if this about for example La Valor in the um, in the uh, waste plant waste treatment plant um, have this area where it educates I think it, it's all, all about education and plan this interaction also Medellin that what they did is uh, when they plan to work on these, um, repurposing these uh, water tank they actually used the local people not say make well they, they did actually ask them to draw what you want to have so they all made these songs but also they said what can you do in the construction one way is to actually have the neighbors actually building uh, the building or uh, actually the, um, bring materials you know, or in a way contribute in a different way than just to pay tax <laughs> so um, I think Medellin in a sense was uh, good and the uh, planner as a good program also this is one thing they do in uh, Valdenboy no way but uh, that's to always couple this education program be the final use it's like I brought we have the, the the complete lecture about housing that is long we have shown, uh, we have is very funny, but at the same TV to visit our follow uh, lady the project project is not houses, small people use in a very creative way. So it was amazing when BTV uh, went inside the forum uh, housing block. People. Uh, what kind of furniture they have, etc. So we were interested in the same. We were interested in the journalist uh, comment, in the user comments, and the, um, we were thinking in in, in a cartography all this. No, so we, we will uh, now it's late. No, but for the new housing block in Carretanger, we will we will have the the uh, the, the all the data. Uh, we will we will take uh, maybe a goal. I don't know. Or maybe you know, in order to take picture of, after a year of living, so we, we, we could talk uh, in a more precise way how people occupy and use. But we have square meter apartments in not the same time. Our house our house has 300 square meters, so we can talk about double circulation, flexibility, all all this kind of thing. With 50 square meters, is 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 something else. Not really. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, just to try to make with just the same topic around. In the first slide, you sh showed the questions you you would like to tackle, and one of them was like, "Who is the author?" Trying to put the public into the game, you know. So a bit of the question like, can the public or the user be an author in your project? Because you're talking about a project that's and this ongoing so that can become an author and still be an author and especially in a you well, a smaller scale and then we jump in a larger scale so how, how can we use the same author which is the public in both scales mm. 
it depends no large scale for instance the uh, um, green space the green space like a park no uh, this time because of Teresa Galin on Gil Clement no uh, you know Gil Clement the, the tier paysage etc no it's amazing in Lille for well, many projects no that have been working on uh, how the protagonist is not the architect, uh, neither the landscape, uh, neither the biologist. Well, the biologist may be, no, because he said, what well, the most important part of a uh, green space is the insect, the small uh, animal, no, because uh, you need the bee, you need all the insect in order to pollinize, etc. So there is this beautiful solitaire, no, in Lille, on, on the on the Renkul has organization of Lille. Well, he left for a year, no, in order to to observe. So the man in green space that, that it was a um, it was the reference in order to say okay we have to design a roof our park is a roof it's a, a park in not only park it's a roof so it has it's a catalan double ventilated etc roof no but in order to have we didn't like it very much to design thing you can see the the necessity of the circle the funnel etc etc but all the park is pollinized is contaminated because of the surrounding coicerola you know coicerola because the yak has the, the coicerola and all the iparreña contaminated so we left the part to be con uh, that's the most part of picture I take in at the moment of the opening of the park, but now is everything is mis and contaminated and is this volunteer, no? So this this contamination we will be responsible for the park, but we left uh, by its own, no? It has to leave, no? It's very vandalized. People vandalize a lot this park, no? And now it's a disaster, no? They take the bench, they take the caoutchouc of color caoutchouc, no, the Maxville drawing. They took the, all the wood, all, uh, they took everything. They could, they could then took the pine trees because they are, they, they are, they are attached, really, because we have 80 centimeters of earth. So it was not enough and the wind, uh, uh, um, this, uh, away the trees. So we, we have really to, 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 to attach on the concrete, the, so they, they couldn't took the trees, no? It only remained in the, and the, and the olive tree. Uh, about housing, it's more the same thing because uh, I think that rehabilitation, no, no, like our house, after 20 years, I'll draw with, well, three draw, but I have the original draw, are beautiful, with three, they make a building. I don't get that. They were anonymous, completely anonymous. So, who, who is the architect? No, the original constructor, the builder. No, as the Sarinen, the table. The I, I don't know. No, our kids. We have a video. I didn't show. We have a three minutes video by the German TV of our kids playing and jumping all around the house. Etc. So we, we like this situation, but this is very personal. I don't think that houses events, and of course we have responsible, etc. Et so I'd like to invite everyone to thank once again uh, Judith and Jaime, and thank you. And please drink some beers at the back. <laughs>